Hello, one and all. Welcome back to another edition of the Average Guy's Guide to Life podcast. You know who I am. You know what this is. My fucking light is blinking. My fucking light is blinking. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Okay, there we go. There we go. Welcome back to the AGPC. You know who I am. You know what this is, bitch. And I am sporting the stars and stripes on my face to protect me from germs. American germs. I am an American. I am an American... Um, Yes, that's right, my co-host. My co-host decided to show up early today. <laughs> I have to protect myself from the American germs, and I wanted to do it in an American way. I wonder if I talk like this, can you hear me? Do I look really weird right now? I do, my co-host? Fair enough. We still have a situation going on with this virus. This uh, COVID, this Corona, and I was having an interesting conversation with someone earlier, and we came up with a couple of analogies that I think are, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking getting to it. You're not letting me talk. If this is your first time watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, know the fat train, my co-host, is a solid three blocks away i am going to continue to mention this it's three blocks away these fucking walls this wall right here it's made of fucking paper mache seriously i could probably run through it charging my head forward like the fucking juggernaut if i wanted to i'm protected from absolutely nothing nothing if a bear just decides i want to get in there he can get in here he can get in here and i wouldn't do shit to stop him nothing Nothing. The train is all the way over there. All the way over there. Jesus Christ. Oh, before I continue this next thought, if you would be so kind as to like what what they said, like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all that shit. You know, I'll come over, I'll bring your shepherd's pie. I'll make you some fucking tacos. Whatever. You know, I might actually do that in real life while you think I'm fucking joking. You know? I might start bringing my subscribers food. Sorry about that. I might start bringing my subscribers food. Isn't that an incentive? Fuck! Are you getting any further? What the fuck, man? I have a rude co-host today. Very rude. Doesn't even let me finish the statement before they just want to chime in. I gotta take this fucking thing off, by the way. It's fucking chafing in my face. Alright. Now that you can see the rest of my lovely, lovely face. Um, I was having a conversation with someone earlier in regards to the pandemic situation that we're currently dealing with. And we came up with a couple of analogies that I think are appropriate, right? And the analogy I came up with in regards to our current situation in when to reopen the economy. Like, how long do we hold out? Like, some states are opening, some are pushing their time back, some, you know, are just sitting and waiting. I like to sit and wait, but I also like to open. You know, it's like, what do you do? What do you do? This is all one large social experiment. You know, the, the, the states that are sitting back and watching, they can learn from either Georgia, who is open, or New York, who has pushed their um, reopen back to, I believe, June 1st. So everyone else who hasn't yet made a decision, this is a learning experience. And the person I was speaking with, uh, I used the analogy of food, right? Because I, I love to fucking eat. As you see, I am a heavy person. <laughs> I love to indulge. How else How else do you get all this meat? <laughs> but, um, anyway, so I used the analogy of food. 
and I compared it to a dish that you don't know if you're allergic to or not. Like, this is something you've never tried in your life. And it's professionally prepared for you by like a chef. A chef prepared this meal for you, this fucking, I don't know, um, let's just say fried zebra chops. So you got some fried zebra chops from the chef. And the chef has dressed it up, looks delicious. But you don't know if you're fucking allergic to zebra, you know? You don't know if it's been food poisoned. But you also have nothing else to eat. This is all you got. All you got is fried zebra chops. That's it. Or you'll starve. So it's either take the opportunity and eat the professionally prepared fried zebra chops or starve. That's the analogy I use in regards to the economy reopening, you know, because it's like if we don't reopen, People are definitely going to go under. Small business definitely is going to go under. A lot of people are struggling. A lot of people in the service industry, people are out of work and shit. So if we don't reopen, these problems are just going to amplify and our economy will become more drained and more fragile. But if we open up too soon, there will be more cases and people will die, you know? So what the fuck do you do? What do you do in that situation? Do you just take the chance? Do you trust the chef and that they prepared this meal? You know, do they prepared this meal for you. It looks good, smells good, but it's fucking zebra. It could have salmonella. It could have some fucking wasting disease and you're ingesting it and you could die. Or it could be fine and you fucking love zebra. You know? So that's the analogy I use. The analogy that she used was a swimming pool and i like that one a lot i like it more than mine actually she said that if there's a public swimming pool and everyone has access to it there's a few people out there that's just leaning over pissing and shitting in the pool they're just evacuating their systems all into this pool that everyone has to swim in and you're seeing them swim i mean you're seeing them piss and shit in the pool, and you still have to get in it and swim in it because there's no other pool. You have no other pool to swim in if you want to swim, motherfucker. This is your cho- this is your choice. This is your only option. Your only option is the fecal pool. Okay, that's it. That's it. What do you do? Do you choose not to swim? You know? Do you close down the pool entirely, not knowing who's a shitter and who's not a shitter, into this pool? What do you do? What the fuck do you do in that scenario? You know? I mean, if it's hot, if it's like 140 degrees outside, and this is the only pool in the world, and it's big enough to fit everyone in the world, but there's a few degenerates that just want to fucking ruin it and just piss in the pool. What do you do? What do you do? I don't know. I don't have any fucking answers. I don't know shit. I don't know shit. These are unprecedented times. You know? This is this is a fucking movie. This is shit that we we're living through a movie right now. And my only hope is that people are maintaining their sanity and they're maintaining their um, financial. responsibility, I suppose. Like, you're able to still live a semi-normal life. You're still able to have a roof over your head and food on the plate and able to take care of your children or other responsibilities. That's the only hope that I have, you know? And I hate having to trust the government to make moves because it seems like the government makes moves very slowly. You know, things, things don't happen as quickly as you would like them to, whether you're on this end of the spectrum or that end of the spectrum, whether you want things to open up or you want things to stay closed down until we have a secure vaccine. Either Whether you're on either side, it's not happening quickly. It's not happening at all. It seems like the more and more that I watch 
well, I don't watch any news. I don't watch shit. But the more and more I get fucking headlines blasted on my news feed on my phone, it seems like things are getting pushed back. Everything's getting pushed back. Movie productions are getting pushed back. States reopening are getting pushed back. Sports are getting pushed back. Everything, and that it's been that way since you know early April. We thought it was going to be in Easter, it got pushed back. Thought it was going to be at the beginning of May, it got pushed back. Thought it was going to be you know the middle of May, it got pushed back. So I don't know. I don't know if I would eat the zebra chop, and I, I, I mean on paper, I definitely would fucking swim in a fecal pool. You got me fucked up, fam. I wouldn't do that shit. No, 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 no. Mm mm. Mm mm. <laughs> Anyway, I don't really like discussing the current COVID situation very much because we're all going through it. And I believe these takes have been said a million, trillion, trillion times at this point. And I am not, a, I mean, I enjoy speaking about politics, but I'm not a politician, you know, and I am definitely not a fucking doctor of medicine. I am not going to be conjuring up fucking vaccines with this guy anytime soon. So take all of your news from your preferred news outlet and don't listen to that biased shit. Don't listen to Fox. Don't listen to CNN. Don't listen to anything that's going to give you one complete end of the spectrum without giving you the other side of it. There's two sides to every motherfucking coin. If you're only looking at one side, you got a two-sided coin that's heads on both sides. Then you can't spend it anywhere. Ain't nobody going to fucking give you anything if you give them a quarter that that's fucking both heads they're gonna say you got a fake piece of currency here go take that shit back but you do the same with your news um intake with all your political um intake you should look at both sides of the coin and see where you fall because it, the news coverage of everything now has become so fucking biased and no one gives you unbiased, in-the-middle coverage anymore. It's kind of sad. You know, it's almost like they they want you to argue. They want you to um, be enraged. Yeah, it's like they're, they, they rely on that. They rely on that for their viewers. They rely on that for, you know, um, interest. They have to strum up interest for their networks, for their fucking programs they want you divided where if anything you should be thinking logically and as a person first and an american second that's how it should go think as a person first and an american second and view everything logically and then decide where you stand you know there's a lot of people that hate the president there's a lot of people that love the president and on both sides they both lie they both lie some lie about, you know, um, if him opening up the country was a good idea. I mean, um, closing down flight, I'm sorry. Closing down travel. When he first did it, people said it was a bad idea. You know, and now that it was obviously a good idea because this thing spread like wildfire, they're going back on their word. Well, what the fuck? Why the fuck did you say it was a bad idea in the first place? Why didn't you just analyze what the fuck was actually happening and wait? Wait before you strum out a fucking opinion on something. But anyway, I don't want to get into this fucking jargon. Um, and I, I, I don't have a political opinion left or right. I am firmly in the middle and I like it there. I see, I see the right and I see what they do correctly and I see what they do incorrectly. I see the left and I see what they do correctly and what they do incorrectly. Uh, I can talk about it all fucking day, though. I really can. Um, because I find it interesting. I find the human behavior of having a team and going for your team, and even if your team isn't making any sense, you're still going to back them. I find that to be very interesting. You know, it's like there's a lot of shit that doesn't make sense on both sides, but people will blindly follow it, and people will blindly still watch these fucking news shows. Like, I don't know anyone in my generation that still watches the fucking news. Who watches the news? Who watches the fucking news, man? Anyway, enough of that. I wanted to talk to you about, <laughs> talking about arguing here. 
I wanted to talk to you about relationships. Oh no, shit just got heavy. Um, I wanted to talk about relationships because I was watching this show that is a guilty pleasure of mine over the weekend only because it is a fucking circus. This is a circus of a show. It should not exist, but it does. And some people may take it seriously, but I look at this shit and think, wow, what the fuck are people? You know, what are we? <laughs> is this what we do? Um, how do we, why are we behaving like this? Like, I mean, do people not hear how they sound or see how they look? You know, that show is 90 Day Fiance. It is a fucking, it's a glorious clown show. I love this fucking circus. I love to watch the fucking elephants jump through flaming hoops. It is so fun to me. And something happened on the show over the weekend that sparked my curiosity and wanted, I wanted to explain what this person fucked up in, in fantastic order. Like he completely boned this shit. And he's supposed to be an expert at it. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you sound dumb. Like, you sound dumb. And not only do you sound dumb, the people that are responding to you also sound dumb. People on both ends of the spectrum sound dumb because you're biased on both ends. You're playing for your team. You're playing for team man or you're playing for team woman. While, in my opinion, when you're in a relationship, you should be playing for team human first without a gender. You shouldn't be playing for your specific gender. You shouldn't be thinking a woman is wrong because she's a woman when it comes to certain things. And you shouldn't be thinking a man is wrong just because he's a man when it comes to certain things. Like if I were to sit here and talk about how to braid hair, and I were to discuss this with, you know, um, other women, they would look at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't know shit about braiding no hair. Without knowing me as a person first and knowing that I have three sisters. I have three younger sisters. I have braided their hair. Yeah. Yeah. I can talk about that. So you should get to know the person first. Right. But before I get into that, I want to talk about how how the misinterpretation uh, of his just his stance was. And he, he was t trying to. It was a seminar and he was trying to teach women how to attract a man, but he wasn't doing it in a way where you dissect a person individually. He was doing it as to you're dividing, you're dividing the people based on their sex when that's never what you're supposed to do. You know, I mean, I'm no expert. I am no expert. I'm only giving you my opinion here and my opinion is worth as far as you can fucking throw me. Um, I don't know. That's probably not a good analogy. I'm pretty heavy. But, <laughs> but what I think you should do is first examine the differences between a man and a woman and understand them. You shouldn't compare them aloud to the people you're teaching a seminar to. You should just state factually that men and women are different, period. We're grown-ups. We know this. Men and women are different. Our biology is different. Our physical appearance is different. And more times than not, not 100% of the time, but more times than not, men and women think differently when it comes to sex, when it comes to um, what's attractive, when it comes to uh, our goals and our values. I am confident in saying more times than not, men and women view those things differently. But that isn't what's going to lead you to a mate. You just acknowledge it. You acknowledge it and you try and focus on what that group that you're teaching, you try and focus on that group, what their strong suit is and how they should behave, not how they should attract, how they should behave understanding the differences between the person that they're trying to attract. So, for example, if you're talking to a group of women, you don't tell them how men expect them to be. You tell them that men expect to see this 
because they're a man, but you don't have to behave in that way. You just have to understand that's what a man sees. For example, most men, when they see an attractive woman, they are not thinking about what their fucking GPA was in college. That's just the facts. When they see an attractive woman that's fucking, you know, a 10, 10, 10, Ren, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, okay? The first thing that the normal average guy is thinking about, he's thinking about, fuck, that looks good. I wonder what it would take to get in good with her so that I can implant her with my seed. Maybe not my seed, but just get in there. Or he's just looking. He's just looking, you know? Maybe a lot of women think like that too, right? But most men, like the, the vast majority of men, that's what they think, right? Now, as a woman, I'm not going to tell you that you have to go out there and dress like a fucking hooker every day to attract a man. I'm not going to say you have to wear fucking skimpy clothes and super tight jeans, super tight leggings with high heels because that's what's going to make the man's eye pop. No, I'm just going to tell you that so that you can understand the man, right? And if I was in a, a seminar full of men, I would do the exact opposite. I would tell the men how the women behave and let them know that for women, it when they see you, of course the physical attraction part is there, but they don't care. They want a deeper, more more times than not, I'm not, not speaking in general here, but more times than not, a woman can be with a sloppy fucking dude who ain't, who don't look like shit, who don't look like shit, and he can smell like shit, but she with him because that physical attraction can only hold her attention so far. She wants to see what's up here and she wants to see what's in here, you know, in your, in your head and in your heart. So if I was speaking to a, a seminar of men, I would speak completely differently just so that they can understand the, the gender in which they're trying to attract. It's simple. It's so fucking simple. And this guy fucking put his foot in his mouth. I don't even think he did that. He put his own dick in his mouth. Like it was so strange to watch him fucking fail like that. It was it was so very weird. But like I said, what you do in a relationship you tr you should um and okay i'm not gonna try and preach and tell people what they should and shouldn't do this is my opinion in my opinion the, the way that you truly understand a person and attract the sex that you're attracted to right men women whatever the way that you do that is by being yourself plain and simple you just be yourself. And if someone likes you for you, then you should be with that person. Period. There's no other th there's no other thing to it. There's no other way about it. You just be yourself. And if being you is good enough for someone, they'll love you for it. If you feel like you have to be something other than yourself, then you're not with the right person. Period. And when you are in a relationship, or you're dating someone, you treat them, you treat them as a human first and as their gender second when it comes to behavioral, you know, um, human traits. Because everyone's a person. Everyone deserves, you know, um, universal respect and dignity, and they deserve to be treated um, and talked to as a, with a certain level of integrity. Right. So you got to treat them as a person. But when you're with them, you also have to remember that they are a different gender from you. And sometimes men and women can feel like different species. You may not fucking want to admit it, but that's the truth. Whether you're a man or a woman, that's the truth. I can talk to my homies and I could basically ruin their lives and talk shit about them, call them all sorts of scumbags, pieces of shit. You ain't shit. You a bitch. All sorts of shit. And they can take it you know, as what it's intended to be, it's a joke, but I can say the same thing to a woman and they would get offended. You know what I mean? 
or a woman can um, do the same thing to a man and it would hurt the man's pride depending on what she said. It's shit like that. You know, I can I can wrestle around with a with a guy that I'm close with. I can just grab him and we can just start tussling and, and rolling around and wrestling and it's fun. But if I were to do that to a woman, I would be going to jail. These are all things that are normal. And I wish he would have and the the footage was also not I guess I don't want, well, it was deceiving. The footage was deceiving. It was kind of cut up. I would like to see what he said unfiltered, but even then, it really like he knew what the fuck he was talking about. Like if I was in his place and I was teaching that seminar, I would have first assumed that everyone in the room were adults, which they fucking were. And if you're an adult, you know that men and women are different. I wouldn't have spent so much time on that. I wouldn't have spent so much time on it. I would have just been like, men and women, men and women are different. Our biology is different. That's science. That's a fact. You know this. You know this. And if you understand um, the difference between the two genders biologically, there's no more time needed to be spent on this. Let's talk about people. Let's talk about behavioral patterns of people. And let's talk about individuality. And let's talk about being yourself and being confident and projecting your own self image. That's what I believe should have happened there, but it didn't. And he just made all of men look fucking dumb. And hopefully I did some um, damage control and trying to make us look better than he did. <laughs> Cause that episode really made men look very, very bad. Like if you know what channel that comes on, that comes on TLC. TLC and Lifetime have a, a habit of drawing this narrative that men bad, women good, you know, they, they do it a lot and it's very heavy handed. Um, but the 90 day show, the 90 day fucking franchise now, because they're they're bleeding this thing dry. They don't care what they have to do. They're going to get those fucking shows to you. So but the, the 90 day series, they don't often do that. And that's why I feel like I can watch it. Like I said, it's a fucking circus. It's a circus. And who doesn't enjoy a fucking good circus? Anyway, that's enough of me rambling about um, what someone should have did. Because, of course, I know better. I'm a fucking PhD. You know? I am a relationship counselor. I'm a therapist. I'm a motherfucking doctor of uh, psychology. <laughs> I am none of those things. But I have a lot of fucking common sense. And a lot of unique life experience. And you can disagree with me, but, you know, we can have a fucking argument about it. Well, I don't argue with people. We can have a friendly debate. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Take whatever the fuck I say with a grain of salt. Even smaller than a grain of salt. A grain of a grain of a grain of a grain of salt. I just feel like, you know, um, it could have been handled better. Speaking of relationships, though. Uh, when you do enter a relationship and you get past all the tricky sh shit that I mentioned earlier, what's not told to you is that you, you enter a relationship contract with that person, right? And your relationship contract on the surface, you know what it means. Let's say you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you're finally committed to each other. You're claiming each other. You're going out, you're dating, you go with him. Or she go with you. Or y'all go with each other. Or whatever the fuck. You have that um, verbal agreement. And you also have that non-verbal agreement. Now, the verbal agreement is... You already know what that is. That is, you know, I'm with you. You with me. We go places in public. You don't cheat on me. I don't cheat on you. You know, um, we're, we're sharing attention. We're going to listen to each other's bullshit. We're going to watch shit that we can watch together. Sometimes I make you watch shit I like. Sometimes you make me watch shit that you like. All of these are verbal and sometimes nonverbal things that you agree to in a relationship contract. You know, these are surface. This is the, the, the fucking 10 font times new Roman that you read on the contract and you sign, you know. But there, there is a very small print 
there is like, you know, the, the confidential parts of the contract that you're not seeing, you know, the terms and conditions where, where the fucking print is microscopic, you know, those fucking things when you sign up for something and it gives you like a fucking 21 page terms and conditions thing and you just got to check the box. Be like, yeah, I agree. I agree. Can we, can we get to the fucking porn now? Damn. But, uh, so it's the same thing relation with, with relationships. When you enter into a relationship with someone, you see the Times New Roman font 12, right? You see that, all that shit. You're good at that. You, you sign off on that. But the fucking back page with a small font, you don't, you don't even take the time to read that. You just fucking sign off on it anyway, thinking, you know, you're all good. I like this person enough to be seen with them in public. But you don't know you just signed your fucking death fucking certificate. You signed your death certificate. You know? It might not even be that hard. You might not even sign your death certificate. But you signed some shit that you didn't know that you were signing up for. You know? For example, you have to be in the room, you know, um, or, or you have to be in the same vicinity when I take a smelly giant dump. Like when I take a shit. If I take a shit and we're living together, that shit is going to fucking sit and, 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 and the smell, the smell is going to be there for your, for your nostrils to enjoy. You have to sign up for those deuces. You have to, <laughs> you have to sign up for that, um, that fucking Indian food coming out the other end there. That's the small print, fam. That's the small print. Or you have to sign up for, you know, uh, kinky weird sex that you never thought you'd be having you know like you, you signed up for i don't know i want you to dress up like a fucking beaver i want you to dress up matter of fact not a beaver i want you to dress up like a possum i want you to dress up like a possum and and find me in the garbage can and and fucking you know take advantage of me like you like you just found a new piece of trash you signed you sign up for that shit, small print. Or another thing in the small print, you have to be able to do it when I'm ready to do it. If I want to fuck, you got to be ready to fuck, and we got to make each other come. If I come and you don't come, you breaking fucking contract. Or if you come and I don't come, you breaking fucking contract. We got to find, like, we, we got we to gotta meet in the middle here. And if you a fella, I feel sorry for you if you got, you know, a little winky dinky. I feel very bad for you. You're going to be doing a, a lot of little, little, little uh, uh, mm, You're going to be doing a lot of that shit. <laughs> I feel very sorry for you, sir. Very sorry. Um, it's the small print that, that really fascinates me. You know, because it's not only that. It's, you know, you have to deal with my weird-ass annoying friends or annoying weird family, you know? You got to deal with my weird quirks. You got you to deal with my uncontrollable burping or uncontrollable flatulence. Which I am not, because I am me. But if I were you, I would review that contract, madam, sir. I would review that contract, and I would read every fucking word on that contract before you sign it. You know, that fucking 12 times New Roman font, that's easy. Look at what you're really getting yourself into. Like I said earlier, individual. You deal with the individual. What are you really getting into? You know, does this person take the fucking smelliest shits in the world? You know, it just sits in your apartment for fucking 72 hours. There's no way to get rid of it. If you open your windows, your neighbors complain. You know, they threaten to kick you out the neighborhood. Can you deal with this type of person? Can you deal with the person that wants you to dress up? You know, wants you to dress up like one of the fucking characters in The Walking Dead. They have a fucking fantasy about fucking a half dead zombie. You know, read that shit, man. Fucking read that shit. It'll save you a world of hurt. Okay. I'm glad you listened to me. Remember, people, like, share, comment, 
subscribe, all that shit, and I will bring you fucking food. And if you don't want food, I'll bring you me, and we can talk, and and you know we can cuddle, we can cuddle, big spoon shit only. Okay, bye.